What was your most memorable race in Australia for Godolphin? Well, I didn't have that much um, success in the way of big winners out there, but um, my last ride there was a Group 3 winner. Um, coming back from injury, and it was my last my last ride of that that four and a half month stint, so that that was quite nice. What has been your highlight riding for Godolphin so far? Uh, there's been lucky enough to have a few. Uh, I suppose winning the Dubai World Cup in 2015 was was a pretty big highlight. What do you like to do when you're not racing to unwind? It's like, what do you do when you're not, not racing, really? Like, I don't know. Well, you go on holiday. I oh, know, but like it's sad. Say. It's hard to answer, but how sad does that sound? Cut the garden, oh. cut the grass. <laughs> I know. James. What is the main difference in uh, the riding experience between UK, Dubai and Australia and which do you prefer? Yeah. Well, the racing in Australia is very different to, um, to here and um, Ireland and France and uh, Dubai, I suppose, in that uh, the tracks are very different. Um, the layout of the tracks are all pretty much the same. They're, um, they've got very short straights, so the tactical nature um, comes into it, uh, whereas the style of racing in the UK and Dubai is pretty much pretty much a similar really, I suppose. You've got jockeys coming from all over the world, but mainly European jockeys, so it's pretty much the same as back here really. It's easier, a bit easier than riding in Australia. Yeah. How did you celebrate after winning on Big Orange? <laughs> I went a bit, well, it took me by surprise because I thought when Order of St George joined me, I thought he would sure, surely pass me, but um, Big Orange just stuck his neck out, dropped down a gear, and really quickened. And when he hit the, really quickened up to the line, which sounds silly at the end of a two and a half mile race, but he did. Um, so yeah, I just went crazy. Really, it was only obviously a short head, but I might have gone a bit early. But I knew I was a hundred percent sure he'd held on. So I mean, he's he's the racing folk have really got behind him. He's almost sort of a people's champion. So. I just wanted to, you know, make make the most of it and let let them enjoy it as well. So, uh, yeah, I was pretty uh, animated. Understandably so, really. What is your favourite track in the UK and why? Have to be Ascot. Um, you know, it's the probably, you know, in general, it's probably the best racing in the world there with Royal Ascot and races like the King George Champions Day. So. It's a fair track, it's very modern, uh, yeah, it's got good memories from there as well, so that's definitely my favourite. The favorite. facilities are great for us there as Absolutely. well, they? they yes. look after us very well. World class. Yeah, we have to agree. Which race do you personally feel would be the most prestigious to win and which would be the most fun? Well, I suppose winning the derby would be that's sort of what we all aspire to do, um, the ultimate horse race. Um, yeah, for obvious reasons. Ultimate test for a three-year-old. Stay, you have to stay, but have the speed to travel. Um, and yeah, I suppose it would be the most fun race to win as well. It, it's a pretty unique track, and it always has a huge crowd attendance. Um, the atmosphere there is absolutely wonderful. Um, yeah, it'd have to be the derby. Do you have a girlfriend? I do, actually. Believe it or not. Actually. <laughs> I have a girlfriend and uh, she does very well to put up with me, so I'm a probably lucky guy. <laughs> In the history of Godolphin, if you could ride any horse from any time, which would it be? You're probably better answering this question. You're dying to answer it, so go on. <laughs> well, the best horse would probably be Dubai Millennium. Yeah. He'd be, um, he would have been a nice horse to ride. What is the best bit of advice you could give for someone wanting to become a jockey and hope they hope to go to the British Racing School next August? You have to be prepared to work hard. Um, and, uh, you know, it's not an easy road. It's very up and down. Uh, it's, it's never as smooth as what it may look when you get to the higher level. Uh, there's always a lot of work to, to get to that level. And, um, and you just you have to be mentally strong and, and you have to be willing to improve yourself all the time. And uh, no matter how good you get or what level you get to, you always have to remember that there's 
people snapping at, snapping at your heels behind. So mm. you have to know. mentally and physically prepare Absolutely. for it as, as yeah. best as you can. Yeah. Be dedicated and have a desire and a drive. Yeah. Ultimate dinner party guests. <laughs> well, I suppose I'd have to say you, wouldn't I? Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> and, and Jane, and my girlfriend. Um, I suppose Russell Brand would liven things up a little bit with his uh, views on things. James Corden. James Corden. Keep things pretty funny, yeah. It'd have to be one. The Queen. Well, I'm not sure whether she'd, the jokes would go down well from James Corden. I Mind think, you, I I think she'd know. be very interesting. Yeah. What was it like winning at Ascot? It's, it's the greatest, it's the ultimate, it's the Olympic of our sport. It's the biggest consecutive five days racing in our year. And it gets attention from worldwide. I mean, I think the, the audience levels uh, from America this year were record high. So it just shows you it travels over the Atlantic and it's very popular over there. So, What's your favourite sports team outside after Godolphin? This is for both of us. Well, I'm a Liverpool football club fan, so. Uh, I get a lot of stick for supporting Man City, I suppose, a few <laughs> guys, but I, I don't really fo follow football that closely, to be fair, but yeah, I do get a lot of stick for saying I support Man City, which I, I don't even know why I support them myself, really. <laughs> What's the piece of tack or riding clothing that you could never do without, or never live without, sorry? Well, you're your equipment and your tack, it becomes, it becomes like a sacred thing to you, doesn't it, really? Mm. Like if you don't ride winners with a new piece of kit or tack, then you start, start thinking, you know, you get in your head that it's something not right with it, you know? So yeah. you kind of, um, so it's all very superstitious in that way. Uh, so it's all very important. Um, I suppose your helmet and your back protector, well, yeah. you can't really You can't go without that, that. exactly. Exactly, yeah. Who was your greatest inspiration growing up? I suppose um, from a family side of it, my mother, my, my father obviously got, got me into racing, but my mother pushed um, and worked very hard for me to become a jockey. Um, she probably carried on her training career for five, five or six years longer than she probably wanted to do, just, just to give myself and my sister a leg up and uh, ride in races, um, so I'd have to say my mother, yeah. Well, it's the same really, um, you know, family is the first sort of inspiration you get, isn't it? Yeah. And my father was a jockey, so, you know, I went to the races with him and, you know, I watched him uh, riding, so that was, uh, that was kind of my path, pathway into being a jockey, really. How do you get from one meeting to the next meeting so quickly? Fast drivers. <laughs> they were fortunate enough to get helicopters every now and again, which saves a yeah. fair bit of hassle. With the roads today getting worse and worse, aren't they? The traffic, the M25 is just a nightmare. It can be stressful though, getting from meeting yeah. to meeting in a short space of time, but it's, it's part and parcel of the job. And we miss probably plenty of rides down the years where you just physically can't, can't get to the track in time. I think I did. Uh, I did Chicago, Deauville in one weekend, Chicago Saturday and Deauville in France on the Sunday, which is different because it's not in one day, of course, but uh, you're quite tight for time. Mm. Probably about five years ago, I rode in the 2000 Guineas up here and then caught a uh, light aircraft down to Heathrow and then flew out to Hong Kong for the yeah. Champions Mile. That was pretty, we, we literally landed in Hong Kong like two hours before the race, so it was, um, that was quite a tight schedule as well, I suppose. If you weren't a jockey, what do you think you would be doing right now for both of us? Yeah. I think, uh, obviously, I'd get a fair bit, bit of stick for saying uh, how I looked up a plumbing course, but obviously that's not what I would ideally like to be doing. Um, I spent a lot of time with Gary Witherford when I was at school and um, did a lot of work experience there. I think it's amazing what, what they what they do and what they can achieve with horses that that aren't aren't necessarily easy. Um, so I would like to I would probably like to do something in that sphere, um, breaking young horses and working out you know dealing with problem horses, working out why they don't want to do certain things. That would be um, that, that would be quite quite an interesting job I think. Yeah, I think it's quite a hard question really because. 
you know, we always want to be jockeys and here we are. So I never really thought of anything else, but it's very unrealistic, but I do like the idea of being a Formula One driver, <laughs> but it's very unrealistic. So, you know, but that's, you know, it's kind of similar in a way, I suppose.